Ciao bello, come stai? Tutto bene? It's me, Kate, to Extreme Chief Internationally. And this is episode 12 of the podcast, Adventures of a Curious Linguist. And I continue sharing with you my adventures in Italy. As soon as I got to my apartment, still hungry, I didn't manage to get any food when the guy was following me. I got nervous. I wanted to know who my other flightmates were. And to my horror, it turned out that they were Russians and a Serbian girl. And why I was so desperate? The point was that I knew that most likely the girls would stick to Russian, maybe to English, but nothing else. Even worse, one of the girls didn't speak Italian at all. In fact, she spoke only Russian, but she came to learn Italian. My advice here, if you ever want to go to learn language, like to embrace a culture, to get this cultural immersion, get some basics first. Never go with absolute zero. It won't be efficient for you. Anyways, I quite quickly established the ground rules with my Serbian flatmate saying we would speak only in Italian. Even though Russian servers could understand each other, still only Italian. And with the Russian girls, well, it was useless because they would still keep speaking Russian and it would be just doing like la 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 la. And I'm not kidding, I was literally stubborn because first I had to prepare for my exams and later on, indeed, I wanted to leave in Italy in Italian and then step by step pick up again. English and Spanish, and then whichever language would appear pretty much. So I started hanging out with Serbian crowd because they were more Serbs and they got together and they also didn't want to speak Serbian, so it was good for them that there was somebody else like me and we would practice Italian or at that time my Spagnolino. <laughs> and it was so good. We would go out, we would party, it all starts in your first day, so that by the time of my oral exam, I felt so confident that I passed at the level of B2, which is up intermediate. I was quite, quite impressed as well, because I thought that it would be B1, it would be already impressive for me. No, it was B2. Great. However, my writing was not that good, because we had to write an essay, not just a grammar test. And there I would make occasional mistakes with doppets, like double letters, because I would be mixing rules of Spanish and Italian. But teachers were quite encouraging and I really liked it. And they put me into a B2 group, very similar story, like in Spain, where I had to catch up a lot on subjunctive mood and also so many rules that I hadn't studied at all. Well, here's a trick. The school was quite interesting because it was so like uh, appendix of a university and we would study at like starting at 9 a.m. got 9, not like in Spain, in the afternoon so at 9 and finish at 3 p.m. Yeah, so six hours. And we would have not only grammar, like speaking, writing, but also art, history, movie industry, like films. So interesting. And I loved it because I could embrace whole Italian culture and cuisine. Obviously, we were in Calabria, so we could enjoy so many variations of food there, just stepping out on the street. To fast forward, we loved our studies and we hated them. As you know, to come to study at 9 a.m. after a sleepless night, it's quite hard. Even though when you leave just across the street of the school, you can't, well, sleep until 11 or 12. And why I'm saying this, because that was a year of experiments and that was a year of sleepless nights. And I can tell you that as soon as we formed a group with our Serbian crowd, we started mingling with the locals and we ended up in Lidi. Lidi, it's like beach, party, you know, clubs, clubs on the beach. And we would spend there every night. And when I say every night, I'm literally saying every night. 
it got so bad that we were celebrating the nights when we were sober. Well, it was 10 years ago. I was young. I was in my late teens. No shame in that. It was amazing. It was amazing because we had an amazing crowd and I was learning the difference between Italian and Calabrese. But I must admit that this helped me to get rid of my perfectionism and actually start speaking. And when somebody actually, a number of students, is telling me, look, when I'm a little bit tipsy, I feel much better, uh, like I don't feel shy anymore and I can speak English, French, whichever language. I understand because indeed you feel more relaxed and when you feel more relaxed, that fear, that shame doesn't impede you, like doesn't block you and you start speaking, even with mistakes, but you start speaking. And I will never forget how by the end of probably the third week of my stay there, we were at our apartment with Serbians and one Israeli guy who was like American Israeli and he fought in two Iraq wars. And uh, it was quite an intense conversation. Four in the morning, kitchen, drinking. And the talk was about wars and Yugoslavia. And if you don't know about history, so Serbia was part of Yugoslavia and then there was war and it's really controversial there. And I was, well, I was sympathizing with my Serbian friends because when I was a kid, I remember how Serbia was bombed and I wouldn't wish anyone such an experience because here were my Serbian friends who almost died there and their parents almost died there. So they were witnesses to this. They were kids. They were you know, three, four, five years old when it all happened. Horrible. Anyways, they were talking there and indeed it was on the verge of a real fight, like fist fight because the Israeli guy was pro Sabarka. He had no idea about Yugoslavia and he blindly believed that what was he doing, especially in war, that was right. And there was a Serbian guy who was saying like, no, this is wrong, this is bullshit, this is it. And there I was, because I was indeed really sensitive to this, like any, any sort of possibility of fist fight. And I started yelling in Italian with both of them that no, like this side of that, this side of that, trying to calm them down in order not to have fun. And everybody just got sort of like, Kate, wow, you're Italian. <laughs> because suddenly in that state, I started speaking quite eloquent, quite I'd say not contaminated here, Italian with any Spanish or English words. It was beautiful. That was my breakthrough. And that how I realized, okay, you need to practice Italian or any language as much as you can when you already have the base, and then you are immersed in the culture. And when you're also in stressful situations. But my mixing of Italian with other languages didn't stop there. And what happened next, I'll share with you in the next episode. Share your own stories, your linguistic discoveries with hashtag Amalingua. And we are going to post the best stories on our social media channels. Bye.